Things have really been shaking along the infamous Ring of Fire lately. A magnitude 5.6 earthquake struck near Valparaiso, Chile last night. There were no reported damages or injuries. The fault system circling much of the Pacific has produced earthquakes in Southern California, Japan, Panama, and most notably the deadly 8.2 magnitude quake that struck northern Chile on Tuesday with many aftershocks since. So does this, signaling, does, does this signal continuing high activity in quake vulnerable areas? Let's ask Time Magazine's senior editor, Brian Walsh. Brian, good morning. Hi. So this ring is really where the continental plates meet. But why are we seeing so much activity there? Well, the truth is we're almost always seeing activity there. More than 80% of the earthquakes that occur globally happen along this ring, which goes from down in New Zealand, actually, up to Indonesia, around the Pacific, and down North America to South America. You constantly have those plates sort of going underneath each other, sub sub subduction. And every once in a while, the stress created by that will slip and you'll have an earthquake. But I mean, it's happening almost all the time. It's just that every once in a while, you get a really big one like we're seeing with Chile. And then you have those aftershocks as well. Because of what we've seen in Chile and because of what we've seen in California, mm -hmm. should we expect more of these right now? Scientists say there's no particular connection between, say, the Los Angeles quake and what happened in Chile. Um, it's really a situation where there's always a risk element if you're talking about this part of the world. And the problem is we still don't really know. I mean, it could be this big one will happen in California or in the Pacific Northwest. Next, t tomorrow, could happen in 50 years, could happen in 20 years. We don't really know. What are the predictors? How do we know one could be coming? Well, I mean, you must basically judge based on where the areas of seismic risk. You look to what happened in the past. And geologists can sort of see, all right, well, this is where sort of seismic activity has happened before. This is where the Earth is moving. The problem is you, it's not like a hurricane or a tornado where you can say, we can track it, we can sort of look days into advance. We really still don't know. I mean, it's still something sort of a mystery for scientists. There's no way of predicting these. No, unfortunately not. Um, does it appear they're happening more frequently? Not really. I mean, it's, 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 truth is they're happening. 4,000 quakes happen around the world every day. Most of them are way too small to actually be felt. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you're talking about the big quakes, they're going to happen along this rim. I mean, almost every plus eight Richter scale quake happens along the ring of fire, and we'll see it again and again. I, you mentioned the frequency. I had no idea. I read that there was 40 per day. We yeah, just I, don't hear about them because we only hear about them when they're in the big cities, right? Right, exactly. You only hear about them because they're in the big cities, and also you only hear about them if they're a bit bigger than, you know, than three or four Richter scale. But, you know, the Earth is constantly moving. It seems like it's solid. It's really not. So should we be concerned about what we've seen in the last couple of weeks here, then? Well, we should be concerned if you live in a city along that area. And it's, you know, Chile is actually an area that's very well prepared for quakes, which is why you don't see a big death toll or something like this, but I'd be worried about a place like the Pacific Northwest. Right. Seattle, on a major fault, not a place that's had quakes before, not a population that's ready for it, but eventually they're going to have a big one. All I right. don't think most people realize also there's no way to predict it, like you said. Right, exactly. There's really just no way. Yeah. All right, Brian Walsh, thanks very much, Brian, for being with us this morning.